How's it going, everybody? Welcome back to the Twitch stage, New York Comic Con 2017 Woo! live. How are you guys doing out there? Woo! Yeah. I got my boy Don Fubar here, and we are here sitting here. We are here sitting here. We are here. We're here. And we're sitting here. Yes. Redundant. I love it. It's nice. We got Robert Kirkman. How are you doing with the Skybound, folks? Robert Kirkman, Sean Makowitz, and Lorenzo De Felici. Yes. We're going to be talking yes. about Skybound shit. Skybound? Yeah. Skybound! So, let's, let's start off with, with the thing, the big thing that just, we just announced today. Yeah, we just announced a new book called Oblivion Song, uh, co-created by this guy. I've got my arm around here because this couch is, uh, either I'm big or the couch is small. I can't really guess which Both. one. Both. Couch is small. You're fired. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> <don't>. <laughs> but it's, uh, it's a cool, uh, you know, science fiction-y kind of book. I like to say it's post-apocalypse adjacent. Uh, uh, focuses on a guy named uh, Nathan Cole, who is dealing with a situation where a large portion of the city of Philadelphia was uh, switched places with uh, uh, another dimension called Oblivion. And uh, so there's a large portion of the population that's stuck in this dimension. Uh, this happened 10 years ago. This guy, Nathan, uh, you know, is part of a program that used to go in and rescue them, but the program's been shut down. And now he has to, on his own, with his own money, uh, you know, string together his equipment, uh, keep them working, and he goes in every day and risks his life to save these people that are just stranded in this other dimension. And it's a really cool action book with a lot of amazing monsters designed by Mr. Lorenzo over here. And uh, it's a lot of fun. It comes out March 7th of uh, 2018. March 7th, 2018. That's now, the cover. So it doesn't take place, like, right at the event. This event has happened... Ten, ten years ago. Okay, ten years ago. So yeah. th th they've had this... This. Yeah, this is something that society's been dealing with for so long that they've decided it's a it's a crater in the middle of Philadelphia and they've largely forgotten it. They want to turn their backs on it. They want to, you know, that's a thing that happened. We rescued everybody we could and it's a real tragedy, but you know, let's just move on. And Nathan is this guy that, you know, still feels for these people, still wants to rescue them and is going after it. So he goes in and like pulls them out. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Is there is there a He's got this cool dimension hopping technology? So, is, is, like there a, is there a cool like yeah. techno babble name for it? It's nothing like sliders. Damn it. <laughs> I wish How it was like you, sliders. Sir. Man, I need to. We're doing this wrong. We should have made it more like sliders. <laughs> I told well, you. Quinn Mallory. Where's that guy up? To? Someone write that down. Write that down. Uh, so, is there is there a particular affinity you have for Philadelphia? Nope. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay, moving on. No, I mean, it looks cool. I wanted to give Lorenzo a really great location to, you know, there's great architecture. There's really cool parts of the city. Uh, it's got cool bridges. Uh, and uh, I uh, uh, don't I don't ever want to do anything that's set in New York or L.A. because, you know, that's where most things are set. Because sure. that's where a lot of creative people live. Absolutely. So. Completely understandable. Uh, how did you get hooked up with this project? When? Uh, how did you get connected with this project? Well, actually, Robert emailed me mm -hmm. one day one night for me in Italy and yeah just asked me right away if I wanted to be involved in a project in a sci-fi project and of course I wanted to right <laughs> as you do and uh, yeah as soon as I closed my job at the time mm -hmm. I jumped back I jumped on this project with, with him and we started right away it's been like one one year ago. It's, one been of, almost, it's been almost two years, but almost there were some gaps because you had that other project that you had to finish oh, yeah. up. But yeah. So we, we've got a lot of issues in the can. We're very excited. We're going to be shipping on time monthly, and uh, it's going to be great. Excellent, excellent. That's one thing I could always say about, about Skybound books is usually they're on time. You can expect them, and usually, they're there. Yeah, usually. <laughs> no, I mean, I've, like I've read 9.4% of the time. <laughs> I mean, I've read a lot of... A well, lot The of Walking Dead books. has never missed a deadline since I've been there. So in five years, we've produced uh, shit over like 65, 70 issues, and that's all on time. So as long as that comes out on time, it gives them some leeway. And maybe we should explain, like, you are the SVP. ASVP, yeah. Editor-in-chief is just easier. It's yeah. the, the less, less super valuable person, sometimes. Yeah. yeah. Like, like, sometimes so, valuable person, like I think. Like Superman is. versus Predator? What is that? <laughs> Somebody write that down. Has that been done? I don't think it's been done. It's been done. But you're the, you're the editor-in-chief. You, yeah. yeah, you make sure, like, you, 
what do you what do you do for Skybound? Oh yeah, I oversee all of. Yeah, all what do you do for Skybound? <laughs> <laughs> I, I eat a lot of shit from this guy. Uh, oh, I'm sure. Yeah. I'm sure. Yeah. Uh, no, so I oversee all of our, our comic book publishing, uh, and also we just announced a new book line with Simon and Schuster called Skybound Books. So we're doing a bunch of fiction next year. Um, but yeah, so I oversee everything. I, I personally edit all of Robert's titles, uh, as well as we, yeah, I don't know, a dozen others. So yeah. Absolutely, and I've, I've interviewed quite a few people since Skybound has been so nice to invite Twitch to different things, San Diego Comic-Con and stuff. We're very grateful to be a part of that. So I've been able to interview people a few times, like Donny Cates, uh, Dan Panosian, uh, uh, seen, seen artwork from Slots and uh, Redneck and all that kind of stuff. And but Mine's the, mine's the best you book. You also are not just <laughs> editor chief. You have a book. Wait, yes, you I have do. a book? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's this? Who's uh, editing that? <laughs> 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 That's a good question. Uh, this actually, is a part uh, of this book. Yeah, assistant editor Ariel is uh, is is my editor, um, and she was concerned early on because you know editing your boss's work is something that she was apprehensive about. But I told her that I edit my boss's work, and we've uh, you know he treats me professionally along the whole way, and there's nothing to be worried about. So I will treat her as nice I, as she I treats me. I appreciate you uh, publicly stating that I treat you professionally. <laughs> no, I mean I I barely barely talked to him backstage, and I gotta say. I don't envy your position at all, <laughs> man. It's tough to know when he's being serious. I don't know what the hell you mean. It's tough to know when you're being I will serious, say, man. Um, I was um, like, do you mind if we talk about that? He just gave me this dead stare like, oh, I got a good, don't I got you a good dare stone talk face. about that. I'm sorry. Of all the assholes in comics I've worked with, he's the nicest. <laughs> I think you should get that on a card. Robert Kirkman, nicest it. asshole in comics. Uh, what are the other assholes you've worked with in comics, Sean? I mean, you can go on my, my comics page and probably figure it out. <laughs> throw shade. Go ahead. Feel free to throw shade. Uh, so, um, let's see. Okay. Your book is called Gasolina. Tell us Gasolina. about that. Gasolina. Yeah. So, Gasolina is basically what happens when the uh, Mexican drug war turns supernatural. Uh, the first issue came out a couple weeks ago. We sold out on the first day. Uh, it centers on a newlywed couple, Randy and Amalia, who are, have, a, have a criminal background, are kind of laying low, and... Uh, in the first issue, they kind of have to come out and help their employer rescue his son who's been uh, taken hostage. Mm -hmm. And at the end of it, they, they retrieve their son, the, the son safely, or so they think. But the, um, the cartel has put these creatures inside of their hostages that burst out of them and kill them. So all of a sudden, it just becomes escalated to another level. Um, I, I don't know. I've been working on it for a couple of years, and someone goes, oh, it's like Narcos meets Alien. And I was like, oh, yeah, no, that's... Uh, that's <laughs> That's good. Let's just go with that. Those are popular things Man, people like. You are nicer than a lot of artists. I'm sure it'd be like Narco Media is like, don't oversimplify. To my Look work. Look at nuance, but uh, no, yeah. nuance doesn't sell. Narcos versus aliens. That's there you go. He has the mind to, like to to say like, yeah, okay, let's say that. That's good. That's what makes him the Superman versus Predator at Skybound. <laughs> now I actually had a chance to uh, uh, in San Diego. I had a chance to check out. Yeah, Gasolina. we spoke there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I remember is uh, being struck by the the relationship between the two uh, protagonists. Yeah, it seemed like like kind of a, a love story ish. Yeah, I mean I don't know. I've, I've talked this a lot, but I have a my first publishing job was for Harlequin as I was romance publishing. Mm -hmm. So I've always been fascinated with you know fictional romances, especially ones that are done well. He's a big softy. Yeah, yeah. Heart of gold. <laughs> Ask my wife. Get my wife up on the panel next, and we can. Uh, you know, never mind. Sure, you bet. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, no, romance. Actually, she's here right now. <laughs> Come on out. <laughs> Surprise, Sean. Um, I mean, I think a lot, of our, a lot of our books that Skybound puts out have strong romantic elements. And people just don't think of them as romances. Obviously, you know, Rick and Andrea and Walking Dead and even and Mark and Invincible. And it's, I think, something that keeps uh, readers very invested in. Something that I'm, I'm concerned in how these people work together and have a strong relationship while they're dealing with some apocalyptic end of the world type shit. Um, yep. And really have to have each other's backs as they take on this cartel and uh, put their own lives on the line. No, that's, I, that's why I brought it up because it actually, I like the, the, I don't know if humanity is the right word for it, but like I, it makes them deeper characters. I think so, yeah. That uh, yeah. Explore, I like to see them explore their relationship. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so. Oh, and also Lorenzo did a variant for our first cover, uh, which is f excellent. Um, but he did, he did covers, variant covers for all of our line in September. And just kind of knock them all out of the park. All, all of the lines. Yeah, eight, eight different titles. Which titles? Do you remember? Which titles? Which titles? Yeah, yeah of course. It was um, Gasolina, Walking Dead, uh, Manifest Destiny, Kill the Minotaur, Horizon, 
Redneck, uh, Invincible, of course. And the last one is... Uh, Birthright. 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 Yeah. Birthright. Ah, yeah, yeah. You're right. We did that. I mean, you did that. I didn't I do did. anything. Yeah, yeah. Nicely done. Um, speaking... Okay, that's a... I mean, I heard of and or read almost all of those titles. Uh, is it... Can you talk a little bit about, like, Invincibles? Sure. Being... Can I, is it like wrapping up? Or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's okay, public. Okay, okay. I didn't know if like, that's a, not secret. was something I could say or that's something. A, no, no. That's a selling point at this point. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> oh, I only buy three more issues? Woo. <laughs> How dare you? You're going to be the super boy versus Predator at the end of this. <laughs> no, uh, I, but I mean that. I mean, I think people are intimidated by looking at long-running superhero right. series. When there's an end in sight, they go, oh, I can finally yeah, get yeah, on yeah. board this. Yeah, right. so I mean, we're wrapping up in January with issue 144. Uh, we announced at my panel uh, earlier today that it's a, a double-sized issue. It's going to be 48 pages, half of which drawn by Ryan Otley, half of which drawn by Invincible co-creator Corey Walker. He's going to be coming back. Uh, had, had recently done six issues before this big 12-issue storyline had started. And uh, it's, it's just going to be an awesome, epic piece of insanity. I mean, I'm, I'm really excited for what we're doing. Uh, you know, I think Corey and Ryan are really excited about what they're drawing right now. And, uh, you know, we'll be wrapping things up soon, and it's going uh, to be real bittersweet. You know, we've been working on this book for 15 years and, and uh, you yeah, know, coming to the yeah. end of the line and, uh, you know, telling the end of the story is uh, it's pretty awesome. It's really cool to get there. So hopefully the fans will love it as much as we do. I'm, I'm and then, you know, I'm, you're, you won't be too sad for long because we're doing a movie. So then, then it'll be that's back. That's right. Talk about that. In, in movie form. Tell me about that. Yeah, we're working with Seth Rogen and Evan Goldberg. They're going to be writing and directing. Uh, we've partnered with Universal uh, to do it. And uh, I'm really excited about that because they, really, they don't really do any superhero movies. Right. So, uh, so you know, we got a wide open uh, canvas there to do some cool stuff, and uh, it's going to be uh, it's going to be a really great movie. Well, man, and I gotta say, like, the, one of the reasons why I really kind of liked, and I'm and I'm not all the way like caught up with Invincibles. I'm about I think about six trades in. Um, why is I gotta, this? Guy? I what, let's talk to this so guy. How many? How much have you read? I'm caught up. I'm in. I'm in hey, switch switch seats. Switch seats. Should I switch seats? No, don't. No, I'm sorry, but. Uh, um, one thing, one of the things that struck me about Invincible is that it didn't strike, it didn't feel like a superhero comic. I, I take that as a compliment. I mean, to me, it's everything I've ever wanted out of a superhero comic put in one book. Right. Yeah. So it is kind of like an entire DC universe or an entire Marvel universe, like put in one series, and you only see the characters in the universe when they're important to the main Invincible story. But you get a right. sense that they're always there, they're always doing their own thing, and and it's a huge cast, and uh, you know, it's a big world, but. You know, we try to do things a little bit differently. I mean, we try to, you know, distill things down to the emotional core of the story, and we really focus on, uh, you know, some very human beats inside of this very large, epic superhero narrative. And we try to, at all times, uh, tell stories that seem like it's like a typical superhero kind of story, but they always take a really hard left turn, and they never go exactly the way they go because there's an infinite number of tropes mm -hmm. in the superhero industry, and we're starting to see this in the movies as well where you kind of know what the third act's going to be and you know where the turn's going to be because this is how superhero stories are told, and it's a lot of fun with Invincible to be able to go, oh, yeah, you think we're going here? Well, guess what? Now this is happening. Well, and that's like, i got to say, that's something you do quite a bit. Like, I'm, I'm not kidding. Like, I have been... I don't know. I got one I tune. Know. I play it over and over. Well, no, no, it's not that. I don't know another writer that I would say has made me more angry <laughs> because of that. Because of like, I want them to win. They lose. God damn you! Oh, the joy it brings me to know how frustrated you are. Well, and that's what that's what keeps me invested. You know, it keeps, yeah. like it's like playing a difficult video game. It's like just because it's you know frustrating and it makes me mad doesn't mean I don't love it. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, if you're happy at the end of an issue, like. What are you there for, you know? Like, I mean, you should be happy, but, like, I, I just feel like, uh, you know, conflict is super important, and, uh, you know, you want things to be interesting. You want people to be shocked. Uh, you know, I, I try to make sure every issue of everything I'm writing has at least a couple moments where you're like, oh, what? I didn't expect that. That's really crazy. So... I think I think what makes a Skybound fan is they, they hate us Wednesday afternoon, but by Thursday morning, they love us all over again. It's, you know... Oh man, I, I don't I, think like Zeke's rage is something specific though. Like if you get him angry mid comic, he's like, "Damn it!" Rips the comic in half and just burns it, and he doesn't know how it turns out. So he just settles into that rage. I'm googling your number, like, "Oh, can I? I want to get him. I'm gonna call him. Gonna <laughs> <laughs> tell him how much it, it upset me." Um, so, is there anything else you want to pimp for Skybound, like that's coming out? Like, because uh, I remember I I, I got to see some 
uh, some art from Slots, Dampanosian. Yeah, Slots in stores now, uh, doing really well. Very excited about that. And uh, uh, Panosian's super talented guy. It's a great book. Yeah, we also have another title coming out next month uh, called Evolution. Okay. We basically took the writer's room approach of Thief of Thieves and got some of the best horror writers out there. Um, Josh Williamson, Chris Abella, Joseph Keating, James Asmus, and they just tell the story about what happens when uh, humanity leaps forward a million years, evolves a million years over the course of a year. Um, and it's all, it takes three different uh, focal points and, and kind of looks around the globe of how these people adapt to their bodies changing and what to do. So, I mean, we just, what we did was we looked at what scared us, and a lot of it was body horror. So we're leaning very heavily into the body horror. Um, even the design of the book looks like a, like a forgotten Cronenberg movie. Dude. Yeah, I know. I, I could tell. No, no, listen, like, you were talking about that shit, and, and I work, uh, uh, my job is like a streamer. I'm on the internet a lot, and people try, frequently try to, like, gross you out, and, and, and I've been around it, but body horror stuff, like, if you look up trypophobia, don't look it up if you have Oh, uh, no, that was actually sent around. Yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> trypophobia is like little holes in skin and that kind of... Like the lotus seed, uh, yeah. Like that kind of stuff. Like, I'm... People totally, get that. Yeah. But I love that feeling, though. It's like I was saying, like, I love the feeling of being kind of disgusted and But it's this, it's this battle against, you know, people that want to stay human or what they perceive as human versus people that are starting to accept that they're becoming something new. And why is that a bad thing? They're, you know, basically Earth is saying, hey, uh, you guys have, have tried your best, but you need to start adapting. And some people fight against that. And that's what the story is about. And the name of that book was again? It's called Evolution. Evolution. It comes out uh, mid-November. Okay. And uh, who's on the book? Uh, the writers are Josh Williamson, Joe Keating. Oh, you said that. And so the sorry. artist is Joe Infernari, and the colorist is Jordan Boyd. Um, and it looks just beautiful and feverish. Yeah, it's great. Uh, can you tell us, talk a little bit about Outcast and how that's going? And yeah, I mean, we have a new storyline starting in uh, issue 32 of Outcast uh, that's uh, called uh, uh, Invasion. Okay. And it, it very much focuses on the fact that uh, West Virginia is being overrun by these uh, evil entities that Kyle has been fighting. He's, in a sense, losing the battle. And so it's about him kind of realizing that and uh, uh, trying to step up to, uh, you know, overcome that. He may succeed, he may not. Mm -hmm. Who knows? You never know. He probably uh, won't. He just told us. I'm just calling, <laughs> yeah, it's a Kirkman. Then, yeah, or maybe won't. he will, and I'll throw that curveball. He'll get a tragic flaw or something like that. <laughs> and he'll just have, to, you have, just have to deal with it, like, you know, his hand's gone or whatever, you know. They all like die. You did. It's one of my favorite people. But yeah, that storyline starts in December. So Excellent. it's going to be Excellent. real cool. And the series is still going on, right? Oh, yeah, yes. Yeah. It's going strong. Uh, uh, the second season of uh, the television show has been somewhat delayed, as my Twitter feed is always uh, uh, asking me. Uh, and I, I know the date, but Cinemax is going to announce it very soon. But uh, it won't be too much longer before you get to watch the second season. Excellent, man. Excellent. There's just so, there's so much shit i got to catch up on. i got to catch up on Outcast. i got to catch up on Thief of Thieves. i got to catch up on, on Invincibles, man. Invincibles. And I have all these books at home. I just need more time. There's so much Not good media to consume, you know? Yeah. You got to do it before March 7th, and then you got a new book in your life. So. Yes, it's true. I know. Uh, Oblivion Song, Oblivion March Song. 7th, 2018. Philly, sci-fi. I mean, what else, what else can you ask for? What like, else can you tell Like you? Always Sunny in Philadelphia with Monsters. You're speaking my language right there, man. It's going to be great. <laughs> it's nothing like that. Unless nothing, that sounds good nothing to you. Like that. In which case, please buy the book based on that assumption. You'll still be happy. Yeah. Oh, give us, give us a, give us a, uh, like, this meets this for Oblivion Song. It defies it. Oh. Yeah. Oh, it's Oblivion be meets Philadelphia. I don't know. That's all I got. <laughs> it's uh, America meets Italy. It's, it's everything you want in a comic book. Absolutely. So uh, I actually wanted to ask you, I didn't, I forgot, but I remembered. Um, what other stuff have you, like, what, are, what, what other stuff can we find uh, of your work? So I recently finished a book for, uh, for the French market, which is called Infinity 8, and will come out for, I think, Magnetic Press here. Okay. And uh, other than that, I did, I did a lot of stuff in Italy and in France, but nothing has been published here, actually. So if you search on Google my name, you can find it and order by, uh, on Amazon. The beauty, of the, the beauty of the internet and Amazon is that yep. you can find just about anything but, from anywhere. But you, you have to know French or Italian to understand that. Well, you don't have to know French or Italian to appreciate the art. I have bought that's, plenty of books that I can't That's true, read. man. <laughs> that's the power of did a, drawing. Did a, did a great looking issue of Dylan Dog that I have yeah. never been able to read. <laughs> but uh, it looks fantastic. Thanks. Uh, before we go, any, uh, obviously, we got to say, we got to 
put Walking Dead into any interview. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, okay. No, that's my cross to bear. You bet. Uh, no, season eight comes out uh, October 22nd. So it's going to be very exciting. Uh, we've got uh, Fear the Walking Dead wrapping up right now. So we got a few more weeks of that uh, uh, leading up to uh, season eight's debut. And uh, it's the big all out war storyline. So uh, if you like war, war, baby. If you like all out war, oh, yeah. It's going to be, you know, kind of war. Negan's group versus Rick's group and all the other groups. And it's going to be a big group battle. It's going to be a lot, of, a lot of war, maybe some grenades. Some cool stuff. Now, I so. know you're the creator, but you pick, do you pick a side. Can you pick a side? Pick a side? Pick a side. I mean, it's eight seasons. I just want Negan to wipe them all out. <laughs> that is the best answer I've ever heard. <laughs> Eeny, meeny, miny, go F yourself. <laughs> well, thank you guys so much for being here today. I do appreciate it. Let's give them a hand, everybody. <laughs> you can check out all this stuff on uh, skybound.com. Yeah, skybound.com. Sure. Yeah, skybound.com. You can see all the updates of all the all the books that are coming out. Uh, Oblivion Song comes out again when? March 7th, 2018. Sorry. March 7th, 2018. Look for that in your local comic book store. But don't go away. We got lots more stuff coming to you right here on the Twitch stage. So stick around.